All right, so we are back on the record as our USBE meeting generally. Do we want to take a couple minutes? Nope. Seeing head shaking. We want to get cranking. Let's do it. I'm just trying to be open. Raise a hand and yell if you need the break. Okay. Let's uh, turn to our continuation of the State Board of Education meeting from yesterday, unfinished business. We were on item seven, general session le legislation preparation. First item being the prioritization of budget or board legislative funding requests. So thank you for joining us. We'll turn it to Todd and Sarah because we're out of board. Can we use first names? No. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, Thank you, Chief of Staff Sarah Young. Um, before we get started, um, I'd like to see if Deputy Jones is available via Zoom um, and if he wants to provide any opening remarks. Uh, Chair, if I may. Yes, please. Uh, no, uh, I, well, yes, I am available, but no, no opening remark. Uh, we can get to it. Uh, I, I appreciate it. I'm headed up to the mountain. So um, anyway, yeah, if, if, uh, Sarah and Todd can go through it. Thank you. Right on. Thank you. All right. Chief of Staff Young. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so this particular item is where we are reaching the conclusion of our budgetary process in terms of what is required at the State Board of Education to be able to submit the board's priorities to the governor's office for their review and consideration in the construction of ultimately the governor's budget. Um, what you will see before you is um, we do have both in your backup um, as well as on the screen, the overall track of the different uh, legislative funding requests that the board has chosen to support. We did demonstrate um, whether it was ongoing or one-time funding and what those values currently are. And then you'll see, um, as Director Call is about to walk you through, we do have the survey results for you. So this is, again, the outcome of the independent um, board survey responses related to ranking these in terms of generating a priority list. We are looking to achieve the final version of that priority list by the end of today's discussion so that then as your staff we can submit that information um, through the appropriate platform to the governor's office for their awareness and information moving forward. With that I'm going to um, with the chair's approval have director call just walk us through the tracker that's on the screen to help orient you to the process. Thank you, Director Call. You bet. Can you hit my mic? Oh, it is. Oh, thank you. I was looking for a different color. Um, thank you, Chair and Board Members and Chiefs of Staff Young. I'm Todd Call, Director of Strategic Initiatives here for you at the State Board of Education. And as Chief of Staff Young mentioned, on the uh, screen here, you will see a very familiar tracker that we've gone through several times. It will look slightly different than what you have in backup, and I'll explain the reasoning to that. The first column here is listed as the final priority, and as was mentioned, that is what we're trying to finalize today. I did not want to put that in backup and send the message that the final priorities had already been established. So we left that for this discussion today, but then we'll share that after this discussion. So the first column represents what will be potentially moving around if there are any motions to do that today. And you'll notice if any of those do change, they will move automatically within the tracker. So if number four goes to number two, you'll see that happen automatically within the tracker on the screen. But in backup, the tracker will just show the survey results, uh, everything in order as they were uh, listed in the survey results. So column two is the title, as you've seen. Column three is the survey results sorted based on um, the results from the survey that you completed previously, and then the ongoing and the one time. The other tab that I'll just orient you to, and if you would like me to reference back to this as you have conversations, is the calculations tab. So this calculations tab will automatically tabulate the ongoing and one time uh, amounts 
for all of the board supported requests. There are 20 of them currently. And if you would like to see the totals just specific to the priorities, we can also do that just manually. But I'm happy to reference back and forth uh, to this tab if that is helpful. So with that, that's the tracker. Okay. In backup or member Davis. Are, are we open to motions? Have you completed your kind of walkthrough? Are we at that kind of open to the floor? So member Thank Davis. Um, I move to um, take number eight and put it in spot of number 13 and move nine through 12 up one. This uh, takes the uh, predictability for local property tax, 66 million one time out of the top 12 prioritized, um, but it keeps it showing support and it moves um, the supporting teacher development and recruitment through retention through teacher leadership track. It moves that into our top 12 and I'd like to speak to the motion. I'll second that. So back to you to speak to the motion. Thank you. I think I've been thinking a lot about this overnight as we listened to the teacher of the year yesterday and something really key that she said was we have to lead from our classrooms and the more we can lead from our classrooms, the more we can keep other teachers, new teachers in particular in their classrooms and keep keep them teaching and they need us. And so um, I just think we need to get this into the list. That's my understanding. We're bringing 12 to the legislature based on a prior motion. I think we need to get this into that list. Still respecting everybody's opinions and the way mostly that everybody prioritized on their own. Okay, discussion to that motion. I see a light from Member Booth. Is that to this motion or for something else? Okay, we will keep you in line. Um, Pastor Hart. I had, I, you know, as, as we all can recall, this process has changed and evolved and improved each year. Um, in thinking about what I wanted to do today, I, I had kind of decided that if we started moving these around, it would kind of violate the process. It was kind of going back to member Booth's idea of uh, the question he asked yesterday, if we if we always undo what committees do, then why do we have com committees? However, um, this one I I completely understand, and I'm I'm and I'm in support of it, even though I'm not in support of making um, moves in general. And and it's for the same reason. It's and I heard the same comment last night, and um, it it made an impact. Um, in addition, the information shared about the um, kind of the state of finances and things, um, it, along with those te that teacher's comments, just made me kind of and and so I just wanted to say I support this, um, but in general just as on principle i i'm not going to support too many other ones um but this particular one made sense why we would remove the other one and why we would move um everything else up because it preserves the integrity of what board members had done so thank you Okay, I see no other lights to that motion. Can we tee that one up then for a vote? Oh, of course, Member Wood. So we, we did this yesterday where we seem to be looking at one time and ongoing, and, and here we're moving one up that's ongoing and one that's one time. There's, I have a concern with that because we have the stabilization fund that gives us you know, the kind of that one time to play with, unless there's an, the economy goes bad. 
they're not apples to apples. So I, I, I don't know if someone can help me understand, you know, what we're doing when we start moving our priorities and flipping back and forth between the two columns doesn't make sense to me, but maybe I need to not worry about it. Member, Member Davis, did you want to? Uh, I think that if if we want to go down that road of thinking, then we need to prioritize differently. We need to have two different lists, a one-time list and an ongoing list. Um, as it is currently, we don't, and we've chosen to put this together. And I will say that likely we'll take this list to the legislature and the fiscal analyst or the, the legislators there will say, can you move some of these to one time only requests? And this will probably one that is gets put in as, as a pilot or something like that over three years or something of that nature. So I fully anticipate some of these ongoing to ultimately have to be changed to one time. But we'll see. I would anticipate that possibility. We've had that with a lot of these as, as we go into kind of the realities of budget numbers. Um, any further let's see discussion of that motion? Okay. Oh, looks like voting is open. Let's vote. Norton, right. yes. All right. Hold on. One at a time. Let's make sure we get you. So Norton's a yes. Member Klein? Klein? Yes. I mean, no, no, sorry. <laughs> Klein is no. Member Real? Real is yes. And let's see, who else do we have out there? Okay. Okay. We got everybody in. We got 11 votes. We're missing time this. Okay. There we go. Okay. Is that everybody? So we're missing Timus and and carry. Okay, voting's complete with 13 votes. That passes 11 to 2. The no's being member Klein and member Bogus. Okay. Other motions? Member Booth. Oh. Thank you. Uh, so I was just interested in trying to understand um, Beverly Taylor Sorensen, I know that there was a discussion earlier today, um, but we moved from the last several years in a second, third, fourth position to 11. Um, I, we're not changing the request from previous years, but I don't want our, unless our support has dramatically changed as a board i don't want to send the message to the legislature that we don't appreciate their ongoing support and even though they weren't able to uh, give us what we asked for the last several years they always increased a little bit if we drop from four to eleven or ten now will they feel that they're justified in not giving us any increase or in cutting back so that certain schools who have enjoyed this experience in the past will no longer be able to have that opportunity for Utah's children. That's just a question. It needs some guidance. Vice Chair Earl. Yeah, I for me, I don't think it's a matter of... Uh lack of importance. I'm just speaking personally. I didn't rank it in the top and that's because I looked at the other priorities that we need right now as important. It's still within those 12. So I don't see it as being less than. I, does that make sense? But I do see other priorities as being like transportation and things that are really critical and key. So for me, that's, I, I think I'm fine with where it's at. And I, I think it still speaks that it's on that list. It's up 
you know, up within those priority areas. So that's just personally. Member Strait. Yes, thank you. So to answer the question, I think many of my concerns were alleviated in our in our committee meeting this morning. And I, when I say concern, that may not be the right word. But uh, I was a little concerned with uh, the ability to meet the demand uh, that there was actually uh, that there was actually money left on the table from Beverly Taylor Sorensen because of the of issues with the matching. But there's been but there's been some changes in that, especially to help uh, rural schools. So uh, at least that's the way I understood it. And someone correct me. But I, yes, that is correct. But so that was discussed this morning, and there, to use the right word, potential. But I felt much better ab about it because I'm absolutely 100% behind Beverly Taylor Sorensen. But it felt like I needed to take a breath until we could catch up supply and demand. Because there's a lot more supply for than there is demand, but it's not because the schools don't want it. It's because sometimes it's even a matter of having a hard time filling the positions. So uh, I, I know several schools personally who uh, they do have the program, but they only had one applicant. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to water that program down to where we can't meet the men, but I feel much better about it. And I mentioned a little bit after our discussion this morning because, you know, all for it. Absolutely. Wonderful program. Good for kids. Further comment? Member Bogus. Application. These are coming back, right? And we can play with the, the ranking later. Is that my understanding? It, but this this can change in the future. Are we really taking we we three have number nines? <laughs> we are taking there. There was a tie there. Two I, number my, I, two number nines. Two I number nines was a tie, and so those end up, you know, um, yes, two number nineteens as well. But yes, we can change it. But this is what we submit to the governor's office, pursued to the what is it statutory budget whatever act, mm -hmm. and then it kind of goes into the PEA system. So this is kind of our first solid shot and if we change later we have to kind of explain why we didn't bring that up front but we're not precluded from coming back later thank you member straight yes chair um and and i had a question i had made a motion two board meetings ago uh that the wpu increase was always our number one and not even. And so my question is, how do we want that to be as far as the, the ranking? That that motion did, but then uh, board member Davis, uh, she's the one that put in for the 12, which I think kind of changes that. But, but uh, how was that understood? And maybe I'm, maybe I'm on the wrong track here. So, so I had understood it, I think, a little bit off yesterday. I, I had understood we had we voted for 12 and then would take the 10. But I think it was pointed out that we actually voted to take 12 and that that was a way to make sure the WPU up there is our automatic number one, still left room for another 11. I think that was, remember Davis, am I, sorry. We're talking about the 10 versus 12 and where the WPU put in. I, I think as we reconstructed that, there was a motion to make the WPU at the automatic number one. Your compromise was let's rank 12. That'll allow the WPU to fall where it naturally falls at number one, and we'll still have another 11. You tried to clarify for me yesterday. <laughs> Am I getting it right now? Oh, there you go. My understanding was that we were going to prioritize separately, that there would be a WPU request, and then that we would have a top 12. Oh. That was motion? my understanding. Motion, but it's not that. Let, Can you read it? Because maybe I'm remembering it wrong. Maybe that's what I wanted, and I didn't get what I wanted. And 
we negotiated to something else, but I do remember specifically moving to prioritize 12 so that we would take 12. Yeah, okay. And well, I let's see where we ended up. And I think I understood that the way Chair Moss did that when you said prioritizing 12, that we would rank 12 and that, but it was just a difference of syntax or whatever. Well, let's see what so, we ended we can, up with. Cause yeah. that's, that's, let me what look we're, back at the motion. I'll let you know when I click. There. Yeah, I, I think we've got the WPU as number one in its natural spot, where, whether that was by default or vote. And then we've got another 11 below that to round out the top 12. That's that's what sits there currently. And is my any staff, do you know whether we have interpreted that correctly? Is it the top 12, including WPU? But was it by default or was it because we all ranked it that way? Ranked it that way. I, I don't think, yeah, I think Member Strait was moving to have it by default that. And I think we ended up just saying, hey, we'll do, we'll rank it all. But anyway, let's do it whatever we agreed on. That's what it is. But do you have it? Oh, so Chief of Staff, Sarah Young, I will just know it is at the board's um, direction, how many we transmit in terms right. of number of priorities. We will always transmit all of your board supported cases. Um, and so then it just, it, it's honestly probably more of a comms question. Like how many do you want listed on the materials that then we prepare for you um, in terms of noting them as your top priorities? We tend to star those as part of board presentations during the session. I think the point is we voted for something and we want to stick with that. Do you have it, Member Davis? I have it right here. Member Earls got it. Vice Chair Earls got it. So this is, okay. it says the motion was made by Member Davis and seconded by Member Real that the board have the opportunity to prioritize a top 12 in lieu of a top 10. That's the, mm -hmm. that's the motion. All right, there we go. So we got 12 and number one is WPU and that's what we're taking up to the Hill. And the rest of them fall below that, but they're still on the list, right? Member Davis. My understanding is that we'll number those 12 and the rest will be in an alphabetical or random or something like that. They won't be listed all the numbers that are there right now. Right. And yeah, thank you. Yep. So top 12 WP on top, and then the rest is the list of other things that were um, approved, but not prioritized within the top 12. Okay. With that member Bogus. Yes, chair in, in, uh, Row three there, item number two, it says that it's one-time funding of $100 million, but my recollection was that when we discussed that this morning, it was $64 million. and that's not chump change when we're looking at bottom lines. Could you help me understand that? The last two years, and that's all that it's been in effect, were $64 million. The, the motion this year was to raise it to 100 in one-time money. As I recall, I can't remember who made the motion, but that was a Sorry. Yeah, I think it was. Was that raise. a motion before the board? Yes, that that was member straight. Yes, the motion was to raise it from sixty-four to one hundred. I don't know if the motion was made in terms of days, and that translated into a hundred million. But right, hours. Sorry. That's okay. It was. It was. Yes, it was brought before the board to raise the request from last year's sixty-four to. 100 but keep it one time do we need to update the information that's going to this meeting from the from the finance committee i think in finance we were talking about 100 well i don't know i think in finance somebody talked about the last two years it being 64 but what was voted for this year was 100 i chief of staff young's got a point comment <laughs> Thank you, uh, Chief of Staff Sarah Young. So I appreciate the question because we do have two numbers on the table. Um, so the earlier conversation in Finance Committee was based on the slide deck prepared by our Legislative Fiscal Analyst's Office. They are reflecting the historical funding levels specific to that program. Um, and so that is what they have. This is the request that we would make in the upcoming legislative session moving forward. And so that's why we have kind of two discrepant numbers. LFA is going to continue to lead with the historical numbers for the purposes of just this is our current funding level, whereas I believe the board is considering 
asking for additional funds this upcoming session, if that helps. Member Lear. And this is more of a, a just a general thinking out loud question. I hope that's okay. I'm looking at the USBA legislative request and I remember seeing this and then I forgot about it, unfortunately. But um, one of their, it looks like it's part of their highest level request is the retiree reemployment $42 million um, fund. I don't know if anybody else remembers that or noticed it or anything. Everybody's looking at me blankly. But um, I, I realized that we're too late now to, I'm not, I without knowing more than I know, I, I'm not going to substitute it or make a motion or anything like that. But if, but it seems like such a good idea to me because it, it addresses the teacher shortage. It, um, it just has so many good components to it. So if you have something like that, I does the board, our only opportunity, let me put it this way, to weigh in on that and support it or not would be if there's a bill. Would that, is that what other people are thinking? Mm -hmm. Member Strait, that would be my understanding, Member Strait. So I've been thinking about this, and if you remember, two years ago when we first did number two, uh, we kind of I I put out an idea and then withdrawn it, and then uh, others kind of took it up and it became a bill, and then it it just grew itself. Same same thing here. I think that what our best option would be at this point is to let it gain its own legs by uh, uh, supporting it very early in the legislative process once it's been picked up as a bill, because I'm sure that uh, JLC is going to be supported by someone. There's going to be a bill, would be my, my guess. We can then support it, but I don't think we even attempt to send it up as one of our supported things at this point, but we still can organically support it and make it happen or possibly make it happen. You bet. Um, and I just hope we can maybe keep that somewhere in our minds. I know that sounds a little bit random and out of order, but I, I wish I'd just remembered this because it has such positive implications in so many different ways, not to mention for Brent Strait. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Um, and I and I guess arguably me too, huh? <laughs> but I I uh, yeah. But I just think it has a lot of interesting implications. I would not suggest that anybody be, the board not having prioritized it, I wouldn't suggest that we start promoting it now. I just hope we can see what bill comes out because it looks like the uh, USBA has it quite high on their list and I think it has a lot of interesting possibilities. So that's all, that's all I'm saying. That it, I was just reminded I wanted to remind you. Can I Thanks. ask a quick question? Unless, oh, and then the member Davis. And I've forgotten, I apologize, so many. Was this to cover the cost of allowing an earlier re-entry to the profession after retirement? Was it connected to that? Because I think a lot of us have been talking about some statutory barriers to re-entry. Is this covering the cost of that? And is that the bill that might be done is to say, look, you can come back in less than a year. We went to the UASBO, the three of us. And one of the things they brought up is, you know, we, we got people out there that would like to come back and they're, they're prohibited, right? And they have right. to wait on the sidelines. So just remind me, is this to allow that and also to cover some portion of the cost of allowing that? I don't know what's one of the reasons I'm not prepared to move this or uh, or promote it anymore is I don't know that. It just says on the page, it looks like it's just the money to do that, not the not the policy change. OK, I'm I'm personally interested in exploring that because that was a big, a big, you know, request in you as and it seemed like something that would get more teachers back in. So maybe oh, that has so many benefits something that to I explore. can see. Old people help old people do something with their lives. You know, all of <laughs> we would bug you less and <laughs> our school system more. <laughs> the, the Brent, the Brent Strait omnibus bill of 2020. Yeah. Ominous, omnibus, ominous. Okay, sorry, I'm getting off track. Member Davis. 
Got it. That that's that's something to look at. I remember Davis and remember Booth. I mean, when I saw it, I was like, why didn't we see this before we did all this list? I mean, it's probably one of the most important ones. I mean, I, I would I would support it. I'd I'd support it on a on the non numbered list, but I'm also fine to wait till it comes out in a bill. And and then next year we get it on early. Next year we talk to the folks who gave us the list earlier and and decide what is great idea and what isn't and then consider it in our own too member booth yeah i'm sorry you guys uh, i'll wait for red but i just have to sing sing a song yeah. let the world sing along and i just can't stand it as i'm looking at it that there is nothing for the arts in the top 10 from the state school board pops has moved way down and here we have all the professional organizations in the state that are devoting untold resources to take the Utah Symphony and Ballet West and, and film and digital everything and opera and all these things to all of our kids. And they are in need of additional funds in order to keep things going. And they're way down the list. So who knows what's going to happen with them? We've just let our BTS uh brainchild fall down the list a little bit i would like to move that we move the bts up to position number nine we can either then just move everything else down one slot or we can switch uh grow your own educator pipeline program to which i'm also deeply committed but so is the legislature i mean it's coming from them so that's going to happen you know but to say that somewhere in our top 10 these art loving board members who understand what's going to happen with kids in our schools if they continue to have the arts or what's going to happen if they don't that we believe in it enough to put it in our top 10 at least one of those things either pops or bts and i would recommend bts just because of the curricular accessibility and the difference it can make in little kids lives all across the state uh, so that's my motion, and you can vote it down, but I just had to go on the record for saying I love the arts, and I think, I, 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 I don't know, I'm open to what you recommend, whether we trade number nine, the first number nine, okay, trade the first number nine, Chair Davis says, and I mean, I mean, Vice Chair, or what are you now? Okay, that's a good idea. Great. I don't. I understand. Thank you. So vote me down, but I just had to say it. Thanks. And I won't <laughs> sing for you. It's no. Let's that's the lutes. Well, hey, you can bring a motion. Um, comment or question? Uh, just just one point. We we are taking for for member booth. We are taking a top twelve, not a top ten. So, so BTS is in that top 12 of enumerated. Everything else below 12 goes off into kind of alphabetized or on the list, but not ranked. So BTS actually is in that numeric list, but I understand the point you're looking at. I'm, I have a tough time switching that with the grow your own because that's broader. And so everybody's going to have their own opinions. I'm glad BTS is in the top 12. That's going to be part of our front charge, but that's that's my reason for voting no. I'm I'm just glad it's in the top twelve. So everybody's gonna take their own position on what what's their priority and we've got some good stuff in there. Everything down to twelve will be in there in whatever order. Member yeah, I think Cindy member straight. Oh no, member Bogus. Sorry. Thank you. I was going to sing too, but I'm opting not to. Sure. Um I I like that member um Yes, Booth uh, spoke to his motion. I, I do think that how he articulated that some of these others may happen with or without us, that our support is warranted, but they may happen with or without us. And so I do support the motion to move it. I think it sends a message um, that we do value the arts. We had a long discussion this morning in finance committee. And so thank you, Member Booth. I appreciate the motion and I will sing for you privately. 
Remember Davis? Oh, no, remember straight. No, remember Davis. So maybe I'll throw this out here. Maybe it'll become a, a motion, but I, I don't want to make a motion right now. I know. An amendment. An amendment. It may become an amendment. Uh, what about listing by number one through six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then alphabetize seven through 12, so seven through 12, seven dash 12, and just list them alphabetically for for that. No. I hear no's. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to make everybody happy. But so I'm gonna be quiet and I'm done. It's not an amendment. All right, I think we can tee this up for a vote. I shouldn't have whispered no in my microphone. That was out of order on my part. I'm sorry. I sp I'll speak to the motion. I I really do think Grow Your Own is going to be supported. I do also think it's important we keep it up in our top 12. But um, BTS has been historically one of the few things this whole entire board can agree on. I'll be honest. So uh, I support it. Actually, you got me. <laughs> grow, grow, grow your own does have external support. Remember, Lear. I also have to say, there it's not every single one of these programs where we have a specialist in our office to promote it. So where our office is already investing in it, I think we shouldn't look um, half-hearted about it um, at this point in our priorities. So I also support it. And I hope that doesn't discourage any of you. Seeing no further, <laughs> seeing no further lights, can we vote? And then we'll see if we have. Um, I have a question. Number I have a question. Klein, I'm just reading the motion, and it sounds like we are replacing BTS with Grow Your Own. Is that how it's supposed to read, or are we voting to put BTS ahead of Grow Your Own? This one is a switch. The last one was a move down and move the rest up. This one is a switch between nine and 11. So BTS is above Grow Your Own. I can't see the chart, so. Yeah, so BTS will move from 11 to nine. Grow Your Own will move from nine to 11. Okay. And the one in between that's, them will that's stay where better it is. worded. Yeah. Okay, it's more clear, thank you. Okay, voting is open. Let's see, we got 10 of us in there. Member Klein? Yes. Member Real? Yes. Member Norton? Yes. Member Hymas, we don't have, right? That's that's 13. Are we missing Carrie and Carrie Hymas? And okay, so voting is closed. That passes 12 to 1. The one no vote being Member Hart. Okay. I have a oh, motion. Sorry. I have Vice a, I'm moving that we move on with the agenda. <laughs> okay. That's kind of like calling the question when there are no other lights on. So I think your motion is granted because nobody okay. else is in line. Let's go to the, unless I think, yeah. Okay. Policy, policy questions. Let's move on then to our um, policy proposals. Is that back to uh, Deputy Stallings? Okay. Yeah, yes, please. Would you mind just because it will take otherwise I'd have to stop talking for like three minutes to do it. Um, so good afternoon. We're um, now going to be talking about the policy requests for this month. There are three staff prepared uh, requests that we're asking for your consideration and approval of us moving forward. So the first one is there it is. 
Okay, number one and thank you. What, uh, one of our staff just wanted to know when we were discussing this. So, um, you may remember last month or the month before, you actually made a board rule change to designate the kindergarten assessment for the 24 25 school year and beyond to be the benchmark assessment. So, we're eliminating the requirement for LEAs to administer the KEEP. It, remember, it'll still be optional, but no longer LEAs will no longer have to um, administer the KEEP or report the results. As a result, there are a couple of references in the code existing that reference the KEEP. And so this policy request or this bill would be to remove the references to the KEEP from Utah code. So that's number one. Number two, I'll just keep going unless somebody stops me. Um, the next one is a, a request to align the timelines for certain legislative reports. We have different reports, such as a report on the strategic plan, uh, reports on the superintendent's annual report that are due to the legislature. Um, a lot of these aren't quite right with timing, and we think we could possibly consolidate some of the reports and just make the, the timing of their rollout smoother and better for the board, staff, and the legislature. And so this bill would be um, requesting that the legislature adjust those timelines that are currently in code for certain legislative reports. Number three is um, a request to substantially remove or adjust the requirements related to educator evaluations from code. We have kind of two options. If you look in the backup that's on Civic Clerk, one option would be to request that the legislature remove pretty much everything from code and delegate that authority to the board to provide the um, provisions related to educator evaluations and board rule. Or alternatively, if they're the, either the board or the legislature would like to retain some of those provisions in Utah code to maintain some elements of the educator evaluation system in code and then uh, remove others that could be dealt with by the board in board rule. So that is what that uh, policy request does. So those are the three staff requests. Happy to answer questions. I thought we had taken some action on some of these no we haven't done anything on these three okay the only thing that is related uh chair moss that you might be thinking of is the action we took in board rule to designate the kindergarten assessment we moved it from the keep to the benchmark assessment beginning with the 24 25 school year but the the code that gave us that authority didn't assume that we were going to eliminate the keep. So there's still some other sections of code throughout that still reference the keep. Um, the other two, I don't believe, but that that's the only one I'm thinking of that it feels like we already took care of it because practically we did, but we just now need to remove some references to the keep. Got it. <clears throat> okay. Member, let's see, who do I close this out? So I've got member Davis and member Lear. Sorry if I missed this in backup. So are we it, eliminating the keep language or are we replacing it with the Acadians language in those? And is that needed? That's a good question. And I'd probably need either Sarah Woodkey or Christine Elegante or preschool staff to mention it. The only one that I can think of is the preschool, the PEEP talks about being aligned with the keep. I don't know if that we would be changing the keep to something else or just eliminating it. But based on what I I saw, I thought it was just eliminating references to the keep. Is that correct? You want to come come on up? Oh well, Chair Moss, is it okay if Sarah Wibke joins us? Of course. Time? Thank you, Sarah. Hi, Sarah Wibke, Literacy and Early Learning Coordinator for the Utah State Board of Education. As far as this specific line, it's in the preschool code and where it's, it's talking about how the preschool code connects uh, and has to align to the KEEP assessment. So it's basically just saying, we wanna make sure that whatever's happening in the preschool space in assessment aligns to kindergarten, but it actually calls out the KEEP. So the request was just to remove that one line to keep it open 
we know the assessment already um, aligns just because those early literacy and uh, early numeracy skills are very similar and, and regardless of the test, they're all very similar as far as making sure they're measuring the most predictive skills. So regardless of what assessment is um, chosen, whether it be a cadence, which of course that's what you've all chosen, um, that it would still align. We just wanted to remove that one line so that it actually was now in line with your actual determination that you made last month. So I do have a motion then. Okay, hey, Member Davis. Uh, I move that the board direct staff to work with legislators on potential amendments to the Utah code as proposed with removing keep from code policy request 2024 legislative reporting timeline adjustment 2024 and educator evaluations policy request 2023. Is there a second? It's been seconded. We can do that. Um, back to the maker if you want to explain and then we'll turn to Member Lear or others. May I chair? Yes. My understanding is that we, on the educator evaluation, we would be removing the parameters in code and creating a framework here at USB. I'm not sure yet. I wanted to find out the staff. Who they talked to. Yeah. Sure. You, you would, if you'd like me to speak to that, um, nobody, we have not talked to any legislators yet about requesting about the open a bill file. Um, tirelessly with Senator Osmond years ago to get exact and, and thoughtful provisions into the. Well, what I can say is the year before, you may remember that last year there was a policy request and a bill that was actually drafted by Representative Peterson, Karen Peterson, at our request, based on a working group that had worked for over a year um, with Jennifer Thronson uh, to provide some I recommendations. Do not remember that. Okay, so and and to answer your question, Yeye was part of that work group. If that helps, no, I um, just wanted to know who the yeah. stakeholders generally. Yeah, were it was. It was. HR directors, yeah. it was all kinds of, of, of people that participated. So, and I'm not saying that it's exactly going to be what was last year, but um, I, I can tell you that staff, as they prepared this policy request, absolutely have kept in mind the feedback they received over that year plus um, on last year's bill. Um, and I, unfortunately, I, I could, we could see if, um, I'm trying to remember who, and, if Angie, I can maybe make your life easier. Yeah, you can just let me ask a couple. Yeah, um, I'm just asking if generally this working group. I don't remember Senator Peterson or Representative Peterson's bill. I guess I can look at it. But were they generally the group was generally supportive of moving this into board rule and and because they're they're risking some stuff in that. Well, that is a loaded question only because. The bill, last year's bill came out very late in the session. It was going to be for a pilot. There was some feedback where people were concerned about it coming out late in the session, that it was a big change. Sure. But this is now hopefully coming much sure. earlier. And um, so Julie Lundell is, um, might be with us via Zoom. She would be more of an expert than I would to kind of speak to the kind of feedback we receive from stakeholders. But whenever there's something new and you know especially when they know that the board is going to then take it and do it in board rule you know there's some questions about well what will that look like so i it's hard for me to answer that because it depends on the stakeholder people who were involved in the work group were probably much more comfortable for example than people who were just hearing about it for the first time during the session yeah hmm. I just wish I knew more about the. There's a lot of detail if it helps. There's actually quite a bit of detail in the backup that shows the recommendations. Oh, and it looks like Julie is with us virtually. So would you like Julie, who works in teaching and learning, uh, to answer any specific I, questions, board member Leary? I, I, I don't want to spend a lot of the board's time, Chair, if I, if I may. I don't want to spend a lot of the board's time, but I, I would like to know 
how I, I just don't want to support this without understanding what HR directors and um, and others who really have to administer this feel. That's my challenge. Well, can I see? Oh, okay. Member Davis. Yeah, I think you know if if you'll notice in backup, it it has an option one and an option two, and and. I think we're going for option one because then we can do the things that we need to do to make this better. But the things in option two really have been suggested by the very stakeholders that you are talking about. I mean, the fact that we have to submit a summative eval every year instead of doing every other or one of those could be a formative is silly. So the other ones is similar. So, you know, adjusting the rating numbering system came from stakeholders. And I really think that we, should ask for number one so we can work on this in-house and and honestly if we don't get it then we talk with folks about number two and that may be um the next best thing in my opinion we She's very good about responding, but I did hear from her. So could we just hear briefly? I don't think I don't need a lot of explanation right this minute. I just would like oh. to hear. Carol, could you lean in just a little bit? And and Deputy oh. Stallings, would you like to ask Julie to to share just for a few minutes? This is a big topic. Yes, thank you, Julie. If you would, would you just summarize um, briefly? Uh, the work you did on this policy request and any stakeholder feedback you've received? Yes, thank you, Julie Lundell from uh, Evaluation Specialist. And uh, we, th this has been, a, as mentioned before uh, by Angie Stallings, a very ongoing process for quite a while. And I feel like these two options do narrow down the two main things. One is the USBE would direct the, the rules and two, kind of capturing some of those most important pieces that our stakeholders have shared, which are um, that the numbering system is is hard to work with. And so if we could just adjust code around that, and also that the specific requirements on the annual evaluation is also a little bit challenging. And found is uh, going through the code that if we just change some of our definitions, that it would help us be able to step towards more of a coaching model. Now, if you chose, if we went with option one, then uh, the board would be able to, in more ways, craft exactly what the rules looked like around that. But even if option two was the one that, that ran, we would still be able to, in many ways, meet the needs of the stakeholders and the requests that they've made of us to make this more workable, more coaching, more supportive of our teachers in growing in their profession. I like hearing more supportive, encouraging to teachers. I was looking at one section that made me a little nervous and I'm having a hard time telling if it's number one or two. The rules described in subsection one shall prohibit the use of end of level assessment scores and educator evaluation. And it seems to be struck from the code, but was that one of the, I don't know why it's struck from the code, just to illustrate the rewriting it into rules. Is that the point? Um, my, my. So the, yeah, that, that piece I think is, generally um so in the bigger part of if we're just trying to turn as much of this as possible over to the board then that could then become a piece of the rules if if these large chunks of the code were turned over to the board then it could become a piece of our rules and instead of being code it doesn't necessarily change what we would want to do is, is what you might want to do as a board okay. uh, it's probably more than just a bigger it's just a piece of a much bigger picture okay Thank you. Have any yeah, it's just in the effort of like licensing where you just you have the legislature that says the state board shall develop a licensing system that includes three things. And then really the rest of the details are in the board rules. That is what I see here is that it would be something like in accordance with rulemaking, the board shall make rules describing a framework 
and then requiring some, you know, some of the evaluations. And then that's it with the rest. Again, it's just to what Julie said with the intent of not having individual, not, I'm not trying to say that's ticky tacky. It's a big deal, but it's a more, it's a subset of this larger framework. And the idea would be to have the legislature acknowledge and delegate to the board generally. And then the board would deal with all the small pieces underneath. Which I support. I just, it, I'm just, some of those pieces were hard won. And I, and I just am a little nervous, but I think I'm going to, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. all right, we've got, I, I'm trying to recall if we had a motion. Was, was the motion made? Okay. And, and was it, oh, a keep, wait, we have a keep motion on the floor? Okay, was there a selection made on whether it was option one or two on this? Okay. Then, okay, sorry, I got lost in the conversation. All three, including option one, the fallback of two. Member Bogus. Thank you, sir. I would move to amend the motion. That we, can I read the motion very quickly? I'm so sorry. Oh, it, it is long. Okay, so then on the the number three, we would just add the language while keeping 53G-11-510 number two intact. And just for clarity, that language um, says that um, we shall prohibit the use of end of, level, end of level assessment scores in educator evaluation. Is there a second? So I have a question on that. Does that preclude the use of growth measures from end of year tests or just proficiency? So it precludes use of growth as well. Well, it already prohibits. You're preserving. I, I have a question maybe. Is it is it crazy to include growth measures as part of an evaluation. I know this is a subject on a lot of which a lot of people have dug deeply. Maybe the 32nd. How crazy is that? Or is it worth considering? May I, may I respond? <laughs> I, I don't like the idea of proficiency because the teacher has no control, right? There's a lot of things they don't control about growth either. But there are some studies out there that allow you to use that to evaluate teacher effectiveness. I'm curious. Yeah, with whether that's been explored. Remember? I think in, in many ways, when you use it, including growth scores to assess the eff efficacy of an educator, um, you, you never know when a child comes into your classroom, if they're going to click D on everything, um, or if they just didn't get enough sleep and they didn't do well. And the, the idea that you know, especially as a, let's call it an inclusive classroom where you have integrated, it's called the collaborative classroom. When you integrate your special education students in with your general education students. And so um, maybe your growth scores are not as high in that classroom. Do we penalize the teacher for taking on a monumental task because their growth scores are lower? I, I just think it's setting up our educators to fail and I, I'm just not in favor of using those in teacher evaluations. I think our, our students um, perform on those tests sometimes poorly for a variety of reasons. Um, and then when they perform well, I just don't think that we should hold our educators accountable in that way. That, thank you for the answer. And I know that answer is out there. I know there's a lot of research and a lot of policy debates, and I'm curious what this body's view was. So thank you. Any other comments, questions? Did we get a second to the to the motion? I think we did. I okay. All right. <laughs> that cover it. All comment question. All right. Let's vote. So the motion is for all three with the amendment. Wait, we are voting on the amendment. Sorry. Let's do the amendment. Amendment is that the motion be amended, select option number one on request number three, but keep 53G-11-510 
dash five pin sub two in code. Can we uh, scroll up on the screen so we can see the entirety of what is being amended based on what's above? Sure. Thank you. I did already put in context what the final motion would look like if the amendment passes. So hopefully that helps. Yeah, we do have votes. So let's just conclude the vote and then. The folks online, just go ahead, call out your name and your vote each time we come up, but I'll try to call through the roll call. Uh, Member Klein? Abstain. Member Real? No, yes. Real's yes. Did I forget anybody? Those are two we're missing. Oh, Member Norton. Norton, yes. Okay. Voting is closed. Motion passes 11 to one abstain, one no, abstaining member Klein and no member Vice Chair Hart. Okay, to the main motion, which is Nico. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Is that member Davis's motion then? Just down a little bit. Kelsey, can you scroll down a little bit or up? I'm not sure. I'm highlighting. It's right under, there you go, right there. If you, and if you'll want to stop highlighting the bo board member Bacchus motion. All three. Includes all three, usually as proposed. Can we say we, that in there, just to be sure. clear, on three staff proposals, so mm -hmm. there's no confusion if we're looking back. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm kind of editorializing We've used on that motion. motion in the past, but yes, we, we can do it. Remember, then, Davis, I'm sorry. I'm editorializing on top of your motion. Is this friendly fine. clarifying or no? It, it's fine. It, if we want to, we can write it. The, the three are written very succinctly in the, mem the agenda. Memo. We yeah. Can add it in if we want. I just figured we want to make clear that it was three because this seems to refer to the evaluation. And I don't want any confusion that we're also approving the other two that are. In there. Okay. Does that work? That the board directs staff to work with legislators on the three potential policy requests to the Utah Code as proposed, including option one of the educator evaluation policy request, but keep 53 G11 510 sub 2 in code. Okay. Seeing no final lights. Let's vote. Oh. Okay. Did you feel strongly about? Uh, saying and move to option two if if option one isn't successful. Yes. Then we'll move to the next. Okay. All right. Let's open the vote. Member Klein? Norton, yes. Norton, yes. Member Klein, member Klein. Real? Klein is a no. Member Real? Real, yes. Okay. Voting is closed. That passes 12 to 1 with the one no vote being member Klein. Okay. Any additional motions? Member Wood. This is an additional, based on the oversight committee that we had the other day, I move that the board direct staff to work with the legislature to codify a requirement for the board to establish an oversight framework in Utah code, including a framework of oversight categories that the state board may use to designate the level of oversight provided by the state board for certain public education programs and requirements. I'll second. To you, Member Wood, you want to address the motion? Uh, we had a really great presentation. If you haven't looked in the backup files for law and licensing, there was a, a um, PowerPoint that was done for us that is in there. 
um, this would be a process where we would look at each individual rule that we make and look at how much oversight it requires from our office. And hopefully it will then become a level of discussion with legislators over time where they put forward something and we as a board can say this is you know this is a category one it's it's lea local control or this is a category four this is going to require a lot of reporting a lot of support we're going to need some extra fte or or some way funding to make this happen and, and i think it would really help the conversation as we move forward um it's kind of based on the i think it was an olag audit that talked about where our governance who does what and, and the play between there, I think it would help with that also. Thank you. Member Davis. Oh, did I skip Vice Chair Hart? You did, Excuse me. Is, I am patient. And I will... Member Davis. Uh, I support the motion, but I want real clarity in my public comment on this because after that oversight committee, I had some feedback, some LEA's feedback that said, well, we think that's just an attempt to get more money to do more oversight to make our lives even harder. <laughs> and I don't see it that way at all. I explained to the folks talking to me that I didn't see it that way at all. In fact, if anything, it will make it easier for LEAs to clearly see what level of oversight there is, for us to clearly understand the intent of the legislature, for the public to understand what level of oversight each uh, code has. You know, I get calls, well, well, how come you haven't brought the hammer down on this thing? Well, in this thing in the code, it was written that we can only do two things. <laughs> it gives us, and they told us, we cannot do anything more. So I just think there's a lot of misconception from all the parties and this will be welcome in adding clarity to the conversation. And it will be helpful to all of us rather than any kind of attempt to try to get more money to, you know, do A, B, and C. It's just an attempt to add clarity for all of us to understand the oversight and to manage expectations. Uh, uh, let's see. Didn't you want to speak? You're going to ask the question more eloquently, and I have a feeling it's the same question. <laughs> well, I, I and mine was not so much a question as a um, as a comment, but I was also very persuaded by the very clear presentation. And one of the things that's important to me is this will give, I believe, the board the opportunity to. Um, make certain not only to evaluate the resources needed and the uh, appropriateness of the um, monitoring, but it will give the board an opportunity to say if a high, a, a great depth and breadth of, of uh, monitoring is required and penalties are imposed, then where's the training? And so where's the notice to the LEAs? And I would think that would be something that LEAs when we, if we can explain this well and be true to the intent, I think it will be something that will provide fairness to LEAs and um, and I everybody was clear to remind me and I agree that not everything gets as much training as as necessary and the training would not be mandated, but it would be available so that again penalties would not be assessed without giving LEAs clear guidance about what's intended. So yeah. Vice Chair Hart, did you want to wait? I concur. Um, I just have a procedural question though. So we just heard this in law and licensing. Like, and now we're doing, like how does, what are we forwarding to, I, I'm showing my ignorance. Um, for sure. What did we just forward? Tell me how this works. Huh? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah, so um, 
the timeline we had anticipated first was that actually the oversight framework was going to be heard this afternoon as study session. And you may remember then it was moved to committee, which is great. And then to the board in November, we act, but we've been invited as of oh. today to present on this to the education interim committee next Wednesday. So in five days, and we are anticipating that the committee may want to open a committee bill to signal or to somehow support the board's work. I anticipate, I think Chair Moss and I, we've talked about what a quote unquote bill could look like. It would be very small, kind of like licensing, kind of like what option one for educator evaluations would be. It would be the legislature stating the state board shall create an oversight framework. And then hopefully that's it. And then everything else would be in board rule. So just in uh, in anticipation of, of Chair Moss and I presenting next Wednesday, we wanted to have your, um, we wanted you to be aware that this could c occur and just make sure you're all okay before we ask or work with a legislator on a potential bill or the committee. It, yes, sure. okay, yes, thank you. And I had forgotten that very important piece. I guess my invitation to the board members are to is to um, watch the law and licensing today because um, it took quite a bit of conversation and time to fully understand. Um, and if we have to redo that in board meeting, you won't have time to ask questions. You probably won't have time to sleep that night either. Um, but if you go ahead and watch that, but I do remember that it's time sensitive because of our invitation. Yes. And if I may, Board Member Hart, I would recommend that you watch the committee discussion of it versus the Education Interim Committee. Not that you shouldn't or couldn't watch the Education Committee, but we will probably have no more than 20 minutes to discuss it there, whereas today's discussion was about two hours, I believe, of uh, just on this topic. Okay. Well, I think we're ready to vote. I have a question. Oh, I have a question. Member Klein? Yes, um, it seems like we haven't, if this was supposed to be presented just as a presentation for us today, so then we would have time to really digest it afterwards um, and get our questions answered and going back and listening to the committee meeting that happened this morning that if we weren't in it isn't helpful when we're being asked to vote on it right now. I would move to postpone this until next month. Right. Maybe I could clarify, or, or Vice Chair Hart, you're you're in law and licensing. Would you like to clarify the two? The can we need? Yeah, let's restate the motion. Um, direct staff to work with. I'm not. I'm not suggesting anything. Are you? Oh, there's a lot of. Okay, I'm going to second it now. Um, Oh, she did make a motion. I am sorry. I'm sorry, Member Klein. Did someone want to second? Made a motion. Motion to postpone. Okay. The motion. Is there a second? Oh, yes. sorry. No. There is a second. Okay. So now we can speak to the motion, Member Vice Chair Hart. I am going to speak against this motion. Um, it is unique circumstances um, where we have been invited um, to speak on this. If we don't give our staff permission to speak on this, it absolutely puts the brakes on this process. We are not committing to anything. We are um, okay. Is there a way that we should restate that to be more? Because we talked about this exact issue this morning. How can we? make that more clear that we are not adopting anything specific. We are simply opening the door to conversation. But it does say that we are asking staff to work with the legislature to codify a requirement. A requirement. And if we're not okay with that. So yeah, Deputy Stallings, do you want to address that? 
wanted to I just wanted to clarify what the thing is that we would be asking the legislature to do. It is almost word for word what states here, what is stated here. It would be that and that's pretty much it in the bill. And it would probably be included in your general power 53E4301 or 3401. It's 53E3401. And it would just say underneath where we're envisioning it, where I've looked at it, in that section where it states a state board shall um, have a system available or process available for when there's violations of state code. You know that section, I think it's subsection eight. Right under that would be this, and the state board shall um, establish an oversight framework, which may include, notice it does say, which may include categories. So it's not bi even binding you really to the categories, but it would bind you to an establishing an oversight framework and board rule and really that's Point just about your oversight. So I just wanted to share it would, I think it would be a small essential sen sentence if that makes sense. Member Klein, did you have a follow-up or point of order? I just had a point of order. I, I think a motion to postpone is not debatable. I th just think this is too big to be pushing, th to be ramming through when it's it's got huge implications. Is a motion to postpone non-debatable? It is debatable, okay. What, Member Green, did you have a light on? It is debatable. Member Green, I, I had you. Uh, initially, my my question was towards uh, Member Wood's motion. Should, but I guess to Member Klein's motion, um, I would support that only because I had some follow-up questions about what that oversight framework would look like. Um, if there was this big discussion earlier today, I was not a part of that. And I think I would love to be a, um, a part of that so I can understand what I'm voting for. So anyway, I would support. Uh, and I might, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I would just support, support to mine. postpone it so I could feel a little bit more uh, educated in this vote. Yeah, I might just ask Deputy Stallings to clarify between the rule that's in process of coming before the board and the request that they direct us to formulate a framework and how that would come before the board. There might be some concern that this would mm -hmm. be authorizing you to work with the legislature to do something outside of board view. And maybe you, you've been driving this, but maybe you can explain the difference between those two and what the opportunity would be for this board to have oversight of all this. Sure. So the um, bill would come to you for your review before it would be passed by the legislature. There is a possibility if and some of you may have noticed last month, we, as in Chair Moss and I, were supposed to present the policy requests to the Education Interim Committee. Um, that got postponed. Chair Moss and I will be presenting our policy request to the committee on Wednesday. Um, there is an opportunity that the committee may open some bill files to um, to draft bills in, that align with the board's policy requests. I don't think they're going to do all now what do we have i think we now have 16 they're not going to do that i mean but they might say do two or three or four of them and the reason why that's nice is if it's a committee bill it gets drafted by the november committee date it's very out there and it becomes one of the first bills of the session that gets considered um i I also think and I don't want to speak for you chair Moss but I do know that there are some other policies other bills in the in the arena of oversight and people are waiting for a solution from the board they're waiting to see what the board might want to do with respect to your oversight I um, as staff I of course want to empower you to make that determination and I think it's an opportunity if we don't show something as our solution for how to provide transparency to oversight and clarity to what our oversight role is, somebody else and another legislator may fill that void or that vacuum. So I see this as only empowering you. The statute would do nothing other than direct you to create your own oversight framework. It wouldn't be the leg the way I'm envisioning it. It wouldn't be directing staff to develop something with the legislature. It would be directing this body with staff to bring it to the board. The rule went through this morning. The framework would come through in the same way. That's what I'm like. 
well, the rule authorized, but the categories, this kind of stuff that you've described, that would come to this body. That's, I guess, I think the missing piece that needs to be understood. As that's the, if the if they accept our request to direct us to develop something, staff would prepare it, bring it to this board, and Correct. it would go through the same process. That's correct. I think, that's I think a critical piece. I, we've got member. Oh, I'm sorry, member Klein. Then we got member order. August and member Lear. Yes, member. I'm I'm just looking at Robert's rules, and it says as far as um, the debatability of postponement, it says it allows a limited debate, which must not go into the merits of the main question any more than is necessary to enable the the assembly to determine the propriety of the postponement. Okay. I think what we've done is necessary to determine whether to postpone. Do we have any further comment on that question to postpone them earlier? Oh. Um, I'm trying to think, I wanna say this carefully. I, I think one of the issues yesterday had a similar, I had, a, some people had a similar concern about an issue yesterday. Um, that was large and the some of the members felt it was sudden. I can see uh, Member Green's concern. Um, and I realized that those of us in law, law and licensing had an advantage in hearing this very thoughtful presentation. And I want to honor that. So I, but I also feel like it's really fair to say, should the board take this to the legislature without the whole board having explored it and voted on it. So I'm wondering if there is an opportunity to explain exactly where we are in the process to the legislature and exactly the rule that where both where we are, what the rule would look like that has not yet, yet been approved by the board and let them see that we're working on it without saying this is something the board yet supports. Is that a doable? Pro uh, is that a doable request? Deputy and, Stallings, yeah, I, I would say yes. I mean, I, I think the question here is, well, this is part of the motion to postpone, right? And so it's all tied up with the question of what we do Wednesday. Yeah, if that opportunity is there. Yeah. Right, and I think as Deputy Stallings has developed this, the question would be, do we direct the legislature, ask the legislature to direct us to go through a process and during that describe where that process stands. We would say, we have developed a rule that's gone to committee, it's not yet come to board. We're asking you to basically approve our committee, continuing to develop that within our board process. So it goes to committee and then the board. Would that would that satisfy Member Lear? I, I mean, I'm, I think the answer is yes. Okay, well, tell me how, because we want to be clear. Is that I, I'm not afraid of a legislative proposition. I just, that takes too much energy over too many years. So I'm not afraid of that. But I just want, I want to be clear. Yes, we have something that has been carefully crafted and we would really like you to see what it is. And I don't even know if I expect a directive from them but I hope they would say, we hope you would consider that this and where we are in the process right. um, in your in your evaluation of what you want to do without demanding them to say or promising to the point um, of unfairness, but or expecting them to say, sure, we're all good with that, which they probably wouldn't anyway. But um, I just I just want I think that they that. Member Green makes a really good point. Member Klein makes a good point. Uh, we experienced this yesterday, and I think we should be consistent. I think that's <laughs> great direction. We will do that. We'll do precisely that. Is there further discussion to the motion to postpone? Member Davis? I would speak against postponing simply because the motion only includes developing something the specific it includes which if you disagree with you should vote no if you disagree with adding levels then vote no if you agree with formulating something that includes levels then vote yes but i, I if we did postpone i certainly would hope it would be specific to come to the full board 
in November, but I would speak against postponing. And then because once it gets done, if it does go to code and become a bill, we still have the opportunity. If we hate our own work, we can vote no that we don't support it. All right, Member Bogus, and then back to Member Lear. So I would move to amend the motion to postpone it until the full board in November. Is there a second? Second. Second from Member Klein. Would you like to speak to the motion, Member Bogus? I agree with Member Green. I if two hours of discussion is a lot to miss to vote for something like this, and. I, I disagree uh, respectfully with my colleagues because that original motion says to work with the legislature to, and I quote, codify a requirement. And it just causes me great consternation. If it were, if it were to say to work with the legislature to present um, an idea that the board something, I probably wouldn't have so much consternation, but I do have a great consternation over that word. So I would move that we postpone this so that we have an opportunity not only to watch two hours of good conversation riveting in 2.0 and um, and then ask our own questions. Thank you. Member Lear. My comment was to say, I don't feel we need to postpone as long as the motion is clear and the presentation is clear that this is a work in progress and that's what it is and it has not yet been been approved by the full board so i'm not good at at creating motions on the fly so i'm not sure and if if we could amend it again are we out of amendments i'm i I, I, that, that, that confuses my brain. I can't, I don't, I don't want to postpone until November, but I also want to state more clearly in the original motion, what the presentation to the legislature would be. So I think, I guess that's right. 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 Okay. Help. Thank so, you for letting me. So argue. just, just for clarity, this does not ask the legislature to approve what happened this morning. It asks the legislature to tell us to go forward with our process, which includes what happened this morning and what the next step is. And the reason I think it's being presented is so that we can ask them to approve that we are working on this. We have it in our body. We're going through our process. It's committee and then it's the full board, as opposed to us being out of the process and conversation while other people determine the fate of our oversight process. That's the idea. We want you to tell us that yes, this belongs with you to develop, and we will explain exactly how we are currently developing that process. That's my understanding of Deputy Stalling's intent and the request that came forward. So, if there are further comments, okay, we do have Member Member Davis, Member Strait. I'm on to to the motion to postpone. Do and the amendment to the motion to postpone. This will help me to know if I should vote to postpone or not. Do we have time? You mentioned that it's helpful to be early on in the uh, bill process by publishing a bill. Um, theoretically, if we started working on this, could uh, could one get in before our November meeting, be, be numbered before our November meeting? If not, then if the motion to postpone does not pass, perhaps we write the legislature to potentially codify a requirement and then it gives us the month to work on it to see what do we like and not like, and then we send it in November. But if we can number a bill now and most of the board's on board with it, I'd like to know one way or another. Deputy Stallings. Um, currently, I've heard there's about 120 education-related bill files. So that means there's 120 bill files already open, and the um, the attorneys that are there will be working through those. We um, ha we haven't opened any, honestly. I think there's been three. 
that we two that board member or legislators already had open and, and another one related to a topic that a legislator had a big work group on. So out of all those 12 existing now 15, this would be 16, we are way down in the queue. If the committee decides to open a committee bill, which often when presentations come before them, so I used to work on rev tax for five years as, or four years for, as one of their attorneys. Every year we had 17 to 25 committee bills that were the tax commission's bills. Um, they got their requests in early. They generally didn't have to ask legislators outside of the committee process to run bills for them. And I've always loved the idea that at some point USBE could present our policy request to the Education Interim Committee and they'd say, yes, we support USBE and we're going to make those committee bills and they're drafted, they're done by the middle of November, they get on the board for the legislature during the first or two weeks of the session. And this is, I know, Angie's Pollyanna world of heaven, right? <laughs> I'm not saying that's gonna happen because tax is somehow less controversial than education. But I do think that the chairs of education interim committee, and I apologize, I'm probably being a little less professional. I will be more, well, sorry. Um, but um, so one of the things that I, I have heard from the chairs of the education interim is that they would like to hear the state board's policy requests and that potentially some of those could be the focus of the committee and that they would support um, the staff of the committee writing those bills between October and November. This has happened. Uh, last year, I think we had two. One made it out, and these were the sunsets. You may remember there were sunset reviews, and we made, we made recommendations. So I think they did two committee bills based on a request, and then one was an educator evaluation one that they did not pass on, or they did not approve. So even if it becomes a committee bill, so let's say that they do, we present, Chair Moss and I present on Wednesday, and they, they want to do a committee bill. The committee bill would come to November, and the, the committee itself could still vote down that concept. But there is something nice about the fast tracking of getting the bills done early in the process and not coming out. So just this is a good example. There was a draft committee bill on evaluation in November. It didn't pass. When did it come out? Once we had to go ask a legislator to do it outside of the committee process, it came out the last second to last week of the session. That is what I am, and I'm maybe sounding a little bit of a doomsday or I'm moving from my Pollyanna heavenly world of, our com of the committee doing everything with us to at this point, a lot of our bills may not be coming out until the last two weeks of the session. I'll just reaffirm that we have been invited by the chairs to bring forward our own ideas from this board and put them in as committee bills and try to get into that mix ahead of the game. So I, I think that's an opportunity to again a kind of put our fate in our own hands to some extent. Uh, Member Klein. Uh, yeah, I'm just listening to all of this and it, I think it's ironic that this is it to help bring more transparency when this, what we're doing right now feels very non-transparent to us as board members that have not had time to see the presentation or look at this and study it out and ask our questions. And I, I just find that super ironic. Um, and I feel like it gives the appearance that we are trying to ram this through for whatever reason, which makes it look suspect and whether or not that there's something to be suspect about or not. Um, again, I, I am, I feel like we should absolutely postpone this till we have time to get those things cleared up and that we shouldn't feel pressured into voting for something that we don't know what it is fully that we're voting on and the full ramifications of this. Um, I would like again to see it next November. And before we vote on it, I would like to be able to see a draft of what we are going to be, what's going to be presented to the legislature uh, so that when I vote, I can say, yes, I am supportive of this framework as it is written. I don't want to just give carte blanche permission for 
um, staff to take over something so big and us not know what it is that is being presented. And yet it looks like it has our support. I just feel like that is so wrong. Member Klein, I think there's a mischaracterization here. We don't know what the framework is because we're asking them to direct staff to develop it and bring it to the board. This is not asking. And I would like to see. I'm what sorry, hold on, is. Member Klein. Member Klein, let's just have order. I'm I'm just trying to clarify. This is not taking up to the legislature what happened this morning. It's just taking up a request that they tell us to develop, which will then be done through standard board process. Member Strait. Thank you. I I uh, do not support postponement because there's an opportunity for us to be at the table. Uh, there is nothing, there is absolutely nothing that is going to be final by any discussion that occurs at the interim meeting. Uh, this just keeps us in a favorable position to act for ourselves and not be acted upon. And I know this may cause an eye roll, but uh, we don't get the Louisiana Purchase if, uh... <laughs> anyway. But it's now it's an appropriate example. But anyway, uh, that's my point. All right, last comment. We do need to vote. We got a number of items. Um, Member Bogus, did you have another point? Yeah. Pro yes, I do, sir. So, um, I I respectfully disagree that we need any legislative code for this at all. We have, I think, we have at least ten to I think ten or fifteen rules where. The only thing cited is the justification for the rule is our constitutional authority to make one. And so really we could do this without the legislature doing anything. So to me, the argument that we need to like slide in there seems a, a little bit weird unless I misunderstand that process. And so that to me, I'm, I would like, if we're going to keep it in house, let's keep it in house. Um, but with that, I personally would like right. to to watch the meeting before I, I vote on something like this. And that's a personal decision. I'm happy to have the debate here in the boardroom, but that's a decision that, that I would stand by. Um, and then my only other thought is I would like to amend the original motion should this not pass. All right. Thank you, Member Bias. Um, and I, I think you're right. We have the authority to make this. The request is that the legislature put a stamp of approval on us doing it rather than somebody else that's 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 what we're trying to get in line for so uh let's that stop that's let's go let's vote can we tee this up all right voting is open the motion let me re re uh, state is to amend the substitute motion that the board postpone discussion of the oversight framework policy request to the november board meeting did i get that right the, i thought that amendment was the amendment. To, if there's an amendment to november to the November board meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Okay. That, that's okay. what I read. Okay. So voting is open. Real, no. Real's a no. Member Klein? Yes. And Member Norton? Member Norton, are you with us? I don't see Member Norton. The motion is to post. Norton's a no. Oh. No, it's, it's, it was an amendment to the postponement. Right. We still have to do the postponement. Right. A yes vote. No vote. If right. you say no, you do not want to postpone to November. To November. Right. It's not the postponement part, it's the November part. Okay, I think we've got all 13. That vote is concluded. The motion fails nine to four. The yes votes being member Davis, member Klein, member Green, and member Bogus. So that brings us to the underlying motion, which was that the board postponed discussion of the oversight framework policy request to a future meeting. Seeing no lights on that one, let's put that to a vote.
Real, no. Fine, no. I mean, yes. Yes, sorry. Norton, Norton no. Okay, we got two no's and a yes from online. Norton was a no, Real was a no, Klein was a yes, correct? Did I get all of you? Okay. And that's it. Voting is closed. The motion fails 10 to 3. The yes votes being green, Bogus, <clears throat> Bogus, and Klein. Okay, member Bogus, back to you. I said thank you, sir. I'd like to amend the original motion. Okay. Yes, that's in order. Could I see the whole motion, please? I know that our staff is working hard. I'm just trying to bit. practice patience. There we go. I would amend the motion to strike the language to codify a requirement. Actually, I would move to strike the language to work with the legislature to codify a requirement and insert the language that the board directs staff to develop and discuss an oversight framework. Yes, that's what I, I, I believe that's, let me read the whole thing. I'm sorry, Ms. Member Davis, just. So, oh, what I would say. Um, yeah, because it's to discuss with them, so it would also. Yes, sir, I believe. Oh, the red stuff disappeared, but I believe that that was correct. Got it? Yes, thank you. Okay. Do we have a second? Okay. The motion is made and seconded to delete the part of to work with the legislature to codify a requirement. Back to the maker, member Boggs. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> to develop and discuss. Okay. Is that... Does the new material end with the word discuss then? Is that the, okay, there we go. Okay. Got it. Okay. It's all good. Thank you. Um, thank you, sir. I just think this, it's simple language, but I think it would appease and, and cause all of us to feel a lot better about it. This is something that I could vote for. Um, it's something that even though I haven't watched the thing, the 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 meeting from today that I would feel confident voting for. I, I think maybe um, it would be something that um, I would have to ask her personally um, that Superintendent Stallings feels satisfies the directive that she needs and and hopefully we can do that. I'm not going to ask her to respond to that um, unless she wants to. Um, but that's those are my thoughts. Okay, Member Green. Oh, your thing is on the fritz. Let's see. Oh, are they all? Oh. Does this work? I think it is. Oh, want me to go ahead? You want to? Yeah, let's let's go ahead if you're live. Um, I just wanted to speak to the motion here that um, now that that's in front of me, I think probably I was hung up on codify. <laughs> um, what I do like is that this would let this conversation to continue and to develop, and then that that brings it back to us as well, so that we can. A vote to you know move that forward whatever comes from those conversations so I, I feel like the process is kind of aligned a little bit better so I would support this change 
Okay, looks like we've got I, live mics. I think we need a... So it says that the board directs staff to develop and discuss the, the board to establish. Yes. Oh, okay. Do we need to have... Establishing with the legislature? Do we have still need legislature? Am I missing? Did I miss this? Where's the? Oh, yeah, sorry, maybe Mark, in Utah code with the legislature. Do, it, the point is, is we're going to be discussing with the legislature. Where do we have that at? It is Utah code, but do we need to just add with the legislature something or education interim or? <laughs> Yeah, discuss with the legislature, the board. I, I guess just a point of reminder, these are policy proposals right now that we're taking to the legislature. So if, if the idea is to tell ourselves to work with ourselves, we can do that or not do it. We can just do it. The, 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 what we're doing here is is deciding what we want to take to the legislature. So if we want to make that clear somewhere. After Utah code or where? With the leg yeah, legislature. How about an oversight framework with the legislature and then just strike? We need that in there. That's. Okay. No, this is our policy proposal option. Right. The, the, op the opportunity here is to see what we want to ask the legislature to do. And I think what's being reframed here is ask the to work with the legislature to approve our going forward with this, which would then follow our board process. But if we're not talking about code, then it's not really part of this discussion. The legislature does code, we do rule, and, and so we want them to say yes you do it you guys do it not those guys <laughs> remember who is those guys remember by, well anybody other than us i guess <laughs> the idea is to get their buy-in that board you are going to address this uh, so i i'm sorry i don't mean to hijack i just want to clarify this is our our legislative policy proposal opportunity and so that what was teed up from deputy stallings was to ask the legislature to go direct us and approve us to work through our process. And I want to remember Bogus, you were, I think, reframing language. So I didn't mean to, I just wanted to clarify that if it's not legislature, then it's probably not this meeting. Back. I appreciate that, Chair Moss. I just think we should perhaps strike the language in Utah code as well. It, I think it could satisfy the concerns that have been voiced here. And if the second still stands, then the motion, um, the final motion, if the amendments pass, would read that the board directs staff to develop and discuss with the legislature, the board establishing an oversight framework, including a framework of oversight categories, et cetera. So really the substance of change would be in the first part of that statement. And I think it would satisfy the concerns that have been articulated here. Thank you. Thank you. And do we have a second for that? Seconded by Vice Chair Earl. Any discussion to that motion? Member Strait. Yes, as I as I look at this, it says that the board directs staff. Now, wasn't there already a two hour discussion in committee on licensing this morning regarding the, the direction? And did not they create this motion that was presented? I mean, so no. Okay, so staff created so, the. Well, I'm sorry. That might go be, ahead. That might be a question for staff. I mean, staff prepared the rule that was prepared this morning. That's part of the process that we're now asking the legislature to approve, right? But I, I'll direct that to Deputy Stallings. There's a rule. Swallow the spider to catch the fly. I think the question was whether staff had developed what was done this morning and whether that would be what was referenced here or part of what was referenced here. I'm sorry, I should give it to you. That was my interpretation. Still just flashing. Jim. Oh. Can I ask a question of the chair while we're figuring out that technology? 
Sorry, question? Can I ask a question of the chair? Sure. After all the oversight committee work and working group and all of that, is the thought of this that we have something in board rule or that we have something in code? Would you like me to answer? If you'd like to, yeah. I mean, Deputy Stallings has led on this, and I think the proposal was that we get in code an authorization for us to do this in rule, but okay. I will leave that to Deputy Stallings. So, number one, we can do the board rule and establish the oversight framework with zero legislation. It is not legally required. Yeah, so, I think that's step one. I understand okay. without a, yeah. a long explanation. Okay. Now, this is literally a slow is smooth and smooth is fast kind of thing to quote Deputy Superintendent uh, Jones. This is like a year away. Like any any actual framework that would be in code would be a year away or or do we because we, what I'm hearing you say is the only thing that will be in code is them saying the oversight framework is our responsibility that the framework itself is not going to be in code. That is correct. Then what are we arguing about? Let's vote. Uh, Unless we have further lights, I think I don't think we do. So, uh, you know, um, I, our, our development, our, our development of, of this is already underway, as you've seen from Deputy Stalling. So what we're asking the legislature to do is prove and put a stamp on our development so that we are proceeding with their blessing as we work through it, their understanding. They're correct. Yeah, but we're in the process and they approve of our process and moving ahead as Deputy Stallings put us. So. The question. I think the amendment does that, in my view. Member Klein, question. Um, did I hear that there is a rule that goes with this? Uh, the rule this morning was part of the process, but that pro that rule is not being put up for approval by the legislature. Correct. But is but that, it is it goes hand in glove with this. Is that correct? What what rule is that? The rule from this morning is part of our process of developing a framework initiated by staff and brought to committee and then to board. What this asks the legislature to do is approve that process. Say, yes, board, you go ahead with this. We're not asking them to approve what we've already brought to committee. We're asking them to approve the process, which has already begun this morning. But we're not taking the no. rule up there. We're taking up there, as Member Lear indicated, a description of where we stand in that process and just ask okay, the legislature so, to approve our doing that going forward. So go ahead. The five. question is the, the rule you're saying explains the process of for what we're doing now and what you're having, what you're asking the legislature to uh, approve. But no. that rule is approved in law licensing, hasn't come to the full board for approval yet. So it's just the we're rule, going on. Go ahead. We're just going on a rule that's only been through the committee, but not through the full board. We're to not take this to the, the legislature. legislature. No, we are not asking the legislature to approve the rule. We are asking them to approve our going through a process of which the rule that was presented this morning is one step in our board process. So the law, the, no, no, nobody's asking the legislature to approve the rule. That comes to the board, and it does not need to go back to the legislature. We're asking the legislature to put their stamp on our proceeding with that process that's already commenced. And the purpose for going there is to get their understanding and approval that we're taking care of this and that we will be bringing things before the board. That's that's the entire substance of what we're taking to the legislature. So, all right, let's let's take it to a vote. We do have a few more items. I think that's been a great discussion. Let's tee up the motion, which is that the board amend the motion to strike to work with the legislature to codify a requirement in Utah code and to replace with to develop and discuss with the legislature the board establishing. So, okay, I Member need, Davis. I need to amend the amendment. Okay. Because if we want them in code to say that this is our responsibility to start working on this process, we have to leave the words in Utah code, but we can keep everything else. To develop and discuss with the legislature, you know, and I think with the understanding that the board has not um, 
approved any framework. I think the confusion has been that we think we're approving a framework. And this is simply no. that we are asking in code for the for us to be given the authority to create an oversight framework. Correct. So is there a No, we just we need to ask code. for them to approve it so that we know that we're acting on legislate. That's again, that they'd make a complete. short code that says oh, right. we are the ones working on this oversight. Approve the process, not the product. Maybe Correct. that's part of the clarification. We're so not asking amendment. them to approve a product, only a process, which then would be proceeding on our normal cycle of committee to board. All right. So is there an amendment me? to the amendment, Member Davis? Yeah, just to keep everything and to and take out the striking of in Utah code. Leave in. So, Leave in in Utah code. Okay. I don't know. I don't want to do more wordsmithing. Can we put it up in the in the main body there? So we can sort of see how this sorry. works. Maybe if we can take the number Bogus's amendments and, and show what they look like in this top paragraph in context would can you remind us again what men i think elise thought i was doing it oh there we go and reinstate utah utah code okay could we just see what that looks like so we we can see the syntax in the the paragraph above yep because you're not asking for the framework to be in Utah code. Correct. Correct. That, you're not asking for a build file for a framework to be right. in Utah so code. It should be developed. It It is weird where it's at now by saying to develop and discuss with the legislature, the board establishing an oversight framework in Utah code. It should be the codifier requirement that the board establish a framework is in Utah code, not. Which is. It's just weird. Right. That's kind of the original language, but maybe there's something in between. I, I can see, discuss, establish, okay, that, discuss with the legislature. I think I've done so many mental gymnastics today, I'm not quite sure what to say. What's... Okay, how about if we did it like this? We put the Utah code up here. To codify a requirement that the board develop a framework, right? Something like that? Uh-huh. Discuss yep. with the legislature a requirement that the board develop a framework for blah, 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 something to that effect. I don't know if that, yeah. I'm trying to. And if you want, we could also take out that the board supports the legislature. So it wouldn't be me. We could have Chair Moss actually do all of this. I would totally support that. Or you. I'd yeah. support you. Or directs <laughs> someone to work with the board or to work with the legislature to codify. <laughs> and we will draw straws at the end of the night to see who gets it. Just kidding. Uh, I was just trying to get the staff out of there, so it doesn't have to be staff. Just I'll put staff back in, though, because usually that's who you direct. Oh, and then take out this Utah code. What about that? Is that better? Asking for a framework in code this month. Look like doesn't look like we're asking for a framework in code at all. Which is fine Just that we at be the moment. To it. Because it, all we want if at it, the moment is for them to say, "Hey, start looking at this." If it helps, actually, this could be the actual language that is the whole bill that the board directs staff to work with the legislature to codify the following in Utah code. And then this is all it would be. Not anything above or beyond that.
that is honestly all we were anticipating. That's a lot clearer as far as the intent goes, what's actually being done. So moved. Okay. Substitute, Sub so moved. Motion substitute is, is that the language? Yeah, let the me... board directs staff to work with the legislature to codify the following mm -hmm. Utah code. The board shall establish an oversight framework, including a framework of oversight categories that the state board may use to designate the level of oversight provided by the state board for certain public education programs and requirements. I'll second unless somebody already has. Was that David? Uh, second. Captures the intent, I think, perfectly and hopefully resolves concerns. Any final discussion? If not, let's vote. I, I do. Member I have, Klein? I have a thought. Yeah, I just, my concern is that it is what we are asking the legislature to do is to cede its oversight over the USBE by acquiescing to this request. Are we asking, are we asking them for permission to write our own code and get the legislature's blessing on whatever we end up with? and they just are no longer involved in any of the oversight over U Utah education? Mm, I don't think so. I think they they reserve whatever rights they have and they direct us in this regard to develop an oversight framework, which so if they, they don't would agree still with have oversight. How we they would still maintain oversight. They, they do a lot of things to direct us and we do it and then they maintain oversight. So I don't think so are they going to, to have to approve? Are they going to have to approve the oversight framework at some point? Or if it, if they find that it um, contradicts what's in code already, or if they have a bill later on that they want to run that interferes with what we have in our framework, how what what um holds priority? What's the hierarchy? It would Do we have to change usual. our oversight framework if they pass something that conflicts with yes so they would retain the same authority they always have in education policy matters if they feel that the rule conflicts with code they'd pull us to admin rules if they decide they'd rather override with the bill they would do that and that would give us different direction any further comments okay let's vote does that answer the question though member klein i, I think the question is whether they reserve authority and, and they do and we as leadership have been up three or four times recently to answer their questions using their oversight authority over our agency on how we have used the power delegated to us. So I think that's kind of the natural framework. And I think this sits within that same framework and we could, we could be, we could find ourselves going up there to say, Hey, here's the framework. And they would say, well, here, here's our concerns. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we, Norton, we yes. Okay, let, let's real. Oh, yeah, we are open for voting has been opened. Okay. I'll be abstaining at this time, member claim. Okay, member real member nor Oh, I think I heard Norton, but I'm real was also yes. Okay, was Norton. Norton was a yes. Okay. Let's see. We are missing one. Yes. Missing Vice Chair Hart. Actually, changed me to a no only because I haven't had time to listen to the previous meeting that happened today, and until I can see it all, I don't. I don't want my name is a word of stain. Just no. Okay, voting is closed. That motion passes 10 to 3. 10 yeses, 3 noes. The noes are Member Klein, Member Green, and Member Bogus. Okay, thank you, Deputy Stallings. Um, let's see. I don't see any other. I do see. It. Sorry, Member Strait. Yes, thank you. Uh, Chair, I'd like to make the motion that we, we move to item 10, the general consent calendar. Let's do that unless we need... Let's see. Is that next up? No. Oh, there's a lot of stuff up. <laughs> okay. So if that's a motion, maybe I'll just ask your superintendent. I wasn't, I'm not sure if we had staff that are 
here for could, could we handle that business i guess it's a motion's been made um we were going to listen to our staff that are here or arts outside or we have bts folks here or internal internal okay i'm sorry i'm not sure who's okay. who's where but um are we okay with that or yeah, we, we sure. do have a motion but okay sure well 